Hello everybody. Today I'm going to discuss tips and tools for various uh, seed collecting. And let's see, I'll start out with various size strainers, bowls, platters, rims around frisbees, serving platters, baking sheets all could be used. And I'll start out with one of the easiest techniques that some of you already may be familiar with. This is a cilantro. It's been dried for a very long time. It's important with many, many seeds to let them dry as long as you can while they're on the plant. And uh, we started to get some some wet weather, so they were dried pretty thoroughly, and then I took them and hung them in the shed. So it has a lot of plant material in here, along with the cilantro seed. And seed is also known in English as coriander and cilantro when it's consumed as a green leaf. And this one you need to have a rim. They're very round seeds. and you take and you brush up the plant material and the round seeds fall to the bottom. You have to make sure you don't have a, a too harsh of an angle or they will pop out. A lot of times I'll have a tablecloth down to uh, catch anything that does want to try to escape. So if you could see, you have the plant material up top, seeds rolling down works very well for all types of round seeds. Uh, next I'm going to talk about endive and this is <clears throat> a French heirloom and it shoots up a stalk and staggered up the stalk are the flower buds, beautiful purplish blue flowers and when they dry out you pinch off the the flower, crush it in your fingertips and put it in a collection bowl. And here I have quite a bit of the material and you run it through a big strainer into a bowl and shake it out. And at that point you're still going to have a little bit of plant material along with the tiny seeds and you can take the bowl outside and give it a little uh, gentle little puffs of air and it will raise the plant material out of the bowl leaving the heavier seeds behind. And this is what the endive looks like still with a little bit of plant material in there but I'm not going to worry so much about getting these perfectly clean. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And this is the reverse technique. Many times you want your seeds to fall through the strainer leaving the plant material behind. In the reverse you want a very small strainer and you know, gently tap it, move it around, and very small plant material, sand, dirt, all of that other stuff that could get uh, caught up on the leaves when it's drying goes through. And then you have clean seeds to label and package. And I'm very uh, meticulous when I label. I label um, the year where it was grown, Sometimes if they were out of the ordinary conditions that it had been exposed to and the state of the plant. Uh, of course, uh, one of the most important things that you do is make sure that you plant always more than you can consume because you're going to have some pest problems. We have a lot of squirrels here and certain plants need male-female to ratios. And so when I have a bed and I do the transplant, first and foremost I take all of my biggest and best sprouts and put those towards the center of the bed and then I plant the smaller ones on the outside and as they are maturing I will, as with lettuce and endive and greens, I'll eat the smaller plants and in the center leaving those plants to go to seed you always make sure that you take your biggest and best. Now if by chance uh, 
you really want to beef up your seed collection for barter and you do start taking uh, plants from subpar, smaller, maybe you know having a little problem with uh, pest or disease, label it and you could probably get away with getting a pretty good uh, garden from those seeds providing that you are very very adamant about weeding out the smallest and that next generation only letting the biggest and the best go to seed. This is an unusual um, technique. Most of them are just letting the plant dry, popping them from the pods and packaging them and with the exception of you know the cucumber and tomato which has the gelatinous material that you need to ferment squash seeds need to be washed down really well and so do watermelon the eggplant this is known as a long purple and it's the end of the season so I, I did my seed collecting already and this guy just happened to be uh, uh, a straggler left on the plant and eggplants are typically known for a low germination rate and they're not mature when they're purple and edible so you let your eggplant go to its mature stage this one turned yellow is very dry uh, since it's very fibrous and tough on the outside I would peel this and cube it and unbelievably this does not damage any of the seeds it is a little handy chopper you could use a food processor or an older blender I wouldn't recommend like a brand new blender where the blades are extremely sharp you may damage a few seeds but not many so you cube it throw it in the chopper food processor add some water and grind away and this will free the seeds from the plant material and then what I do is I take all of that chopped material put it in a big mason jar and fill it with water and the plant material floats to the top and leave your seeds at the bottom and then you just dump them out onto the paper plate and let them dry thoroughly this was a tobacco plant and I crushed a lot of the seed pods and there's a huge amount of uh, plant material same thing run it through a strainer and tobacco seeds are the smallest seeds on the planet some of them anyway and they go through the reverse strainer and um, catches the remainder of the plant material now a seed company will send you anywhere usually between 15 and maybe 200 seeds most of the tobacco that I had acquired from the seed company uh, sent very small amounts. When I opened up the envelope, it was just like powder, a couple little seeds in the bottom of it, and I was quite surprised. To give you an idea, um, this is a Louisiana, and this plant grew to about six and a half feet. Big, gigantic, um, very typical of what people think of as a tobacco leaf. and um, probably eight to ten plants and I got three bags of seeds this size and this is literally millions of seeds from one harvest and you could plant acres and acres and acres and it is the historically one of the largest cash crops on the planet so I brought some of my plants indoors I'm going to pan up a little bit here and bell peppers are perennial if the weather is quite mild and last year I had great success overwintering them because we have a short winter here in South Carolina, a couple grow lights and bringing them indoors and as you can see I have green bell peppers and red bell peppers and they will hang tough until spring and then they'll go back outside and they'll be very very early producers for me. Lettuce seed is uh, very similar to the endive but it 
clusters at the top and has uh, kind of like the dandelion fluff along with it. So you, you let that dry on the plant, you break it all up and, and do the same technique with the strainer, blowing the plant material away and, and uh, then sifting. All right, I'll come back with more in a little bit. Thank you.